Welcome back. So we're talking about the SVD, and now we're getting into some of the key details that you have to keep in mind when you're actually using the SVD for data processing and especially for scientific computing. And so one of the really, really important things I want to bring up is the importance when you're doing the SVD of data alignment, so alignment and invariances. And I'll tell you what this means uh, in a minute. I mean, translational and rotational invariances of your data, okay? So when you build your data matrix X, X, uh, again, let's say that this is the human faces example, X1, X2, dot, 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 XM. There is an implicit assumption, because this is based on that correlation matrix of X transpose times X, or X times X transpose, where you're taking inner products of all of these columns of X with each other. There's this fundamental assumption that every row of X means the same thing from person to person. Okay, so when I take person one and I take person two, let's say this is, uh, you know, X1 and X2, and I take their dot product, there is an assumption that when I dot product the pixel corresponding to the eyes, that it's this, it's, it means an eye in both images, that that pixel is at the location of the eye in both images, and the mouth is at the same location in both images. Okay, If I have an example where my data is not kind of aligned, so I have you know, a person over here and a person over here, so that they're kind of translated, I'm going to get a terrible singular value decomposition because now I'm not comparing eyes with eyes and noses with noses and mouths with mouths. I'm comparing eyes with space, okay, and cheek with eye and things like that. So it doesn't make any sense if the data is not aligned. So we assume that our data is aligned and cropped so that apple it's kind of an apples to apples comparison. Whereas if you have this kind of translation of the thing you care about in your image, the SVD is going to be a really poor uh, method for pulling out features because it's just not going to work. Okay, And that's actually one of the reasons that in the early uh, Facebook face uh, recognition algorithms, what they would do is they would actually, the first thing they would do is they would pick out the corners of the eyes, the corners of the nose, and the corners of the mouth, and they would map it onto a standard stencil so that everyone's eyes, nose, and mouth were at the same kind of geometry. So even if even if one person had maybe uh, wider eyes and a taller face, or narrower eyes and a shorter face, they would get mapped onto this standard template so that the pixels in the mouth region, the nose region, and the eye region could be compared apples to apples from image to image. And that gives you a much, much better uh, classification performance and dimensionality reduction feature extraction just by cropping and aligning your data. Okay, so we as humans have this innate ability to recognize translational invariance in images. Okay, so if I see an image of a truck over here or a truck over here, it doesn't make much of a difference to me. It makes a huge difference to the SVD and to image classification. So you have to really crop and align based on the object you're, you're looking for. Okay, other examples of invariances that the SVD cannot handle very well that we can handle are rotations. So in fact, humans have um, a really good sense of what I'm going to call camera symmetries. So if you look at an object from any different perspective, you can you know, very easily tell what that object is and classify it regardless of translations, rotations, and scale invariances. Again, not so for the singular value decomposition. This is not built to have those invariances of translation, rotation, and scale. Uh, modern methods in optimization are starting to get dimensionality reduction that has these invariances. And in fact, that's why people like convolutional neural networks so much is because they capture this translational invariance that is so easy for us uh, to handle in images. So another example I like to show, and I'm going to code this up in MATLAB uh, and Python, is this idea that if I have a data matrix X that looks like this, where um, I'm going to shade it in, that means that the value is 1, and the clear region means that the value is 0. So this is my data matrix X. This is a rank 1 matrix. There is one object, there's one linearly 
uh, independent row and column that describes this entire data matrix, okay? Um, maybe it's rank two. I think it's, yeah, it, it's low rank, uh, a low rank data matrix. But if I start to rotate that square then and compute the SVD, my rank is gonna increase and increase and increase and increase until when I have a diamond like this, again, it's the same object. To us humans, we recognize that this is the same low rank object that this is, except now when I compute the SVD, because it's doing row-wise and column-wise correlations, this has very high rank, maybe you know in the hundreds, depending on the resolution of the image. This might have a rank of 100, even though we recognize that it's still kind of a one rank one object. It's a like one coherent square. We just rotated it. So that's a cautionary tale that you have to be very careful when you're using the SVD for systems with translations, rotations, scale invariance, um, especially if you're using this to build dynamical systems models like um, Galerkin projection models, if this is a physical system evolving in time. If you take the SVD of a traveling wave as it goes from left to right, you're not going to get one coherent wave uh, with a wave speed. You're going to get some weird um, linear combination of this wave at lots and lots of positions along its track, and it's not going to make physical sense. So I want to point this out. Um, you know, if this matrix X has the meaning uh, that X has spatial, so it's called the space and time, dimension, so it's some spatial measurement evolving in time, then the SVD is essentially going to give you a space-time separation of variables, just like what we do in solving partial differential equations, um, just like what we do with the Fourier transform. And so if you have a system that has traveling waves uh, or rotations or scale invariances, this isn't going to work very well. Okay, big caution, big caveat, uh, and it's actually a pretty exciting area of ongoing research is how to take these, these very simple linear algebra techniques and adapt them so that they can handle rotations and translations and things like that. Okay, so we'll code this up and see how it works and kind of see these pitfalls in code next. Thank you.